Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rory and in this video I want to talk to you about the best video settings for the Panasonic S5. I picked up this camera as part of my videography business in order to uh, film weddings, uh, real estate, commercial stuff, things like that. Um, and it, it's, it's great for that sort of thing. It will also be great for like a travel or a vlogging camera. So in this video I'm just going to go through all the settings that I use uh, to set this up to get the best out of it for video. Um, hopefully you guys can uh, get something from it. You don't have to use the exact same settings, but yeah, it'll it'll guide it'll, it'll hopefully at least guide you in the right direction. All right, so here we have the Panasonic S5. Now the uh, the first thing that I always do with any camera is I turn off a couple of things. So uh, we go into the menus. Um, the first thing I want to turn off is the AF assist light just because that can be annoying. So you go down here uh, into this menu, into the focus menu, um, turn that off. Uh, the next thing that I always turn off is the beeping, uh, which I'm pretty sure, yep, it's in this menu here. Go in there, turn off the beeping. There's nothing more annoying than in the middle of a wedding, having a photographer or a videographer with their AF beeping as, it's, um, as the ceremony is going on. So. Turn those couple of things off. Um, the final thing is this LVF button on this side over here. Um, if you have it set so that every time you go in front of the eyepiece it turns off, that's going to be really annoying whenever you put the camera on a gimbal or if you're trying to hold it close to your body to stabilise it. So I always just toggle that until it's completely off so that you can just um, put your hand over that and it doesn't turn itself off. Right, now um, from that, basically what I do is I set my camera up so that I can easily change which mode I'm in on the custom modes at the top um, and without having to change any of the other settings. So I will basically, I'll go through all of the settings that I set in the menu first, um, then I'll show you how I set my custom buttons and finally I'll show you how to set all of that into each of the three custom settings. Um, so basically on the top dial you want to be in the movie mode. So yeah, I'll go through um, right from the start and we'll show you exactly how we do it. So this is um, just, you press the menu set button to get to here. So from the main screen, menu set. The first one here, you want to change that exposure mode to manual. I'm pretty sure it's set to P or A by default, but manual will allow you to change your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO pretty easily. Um, in your photo style, that's entirely up to you. I would avoid the standard style. Um, I use a mixture of Vlog as well as uh, the Cine Lake D2 and the Natural Profile. Um, Vlog gives you the most dynamic range, but it does mean a bit more work in post. So if you can, um, if you're okay with that, then that's fine. If you want to have a little bit less work in post, then uh, choose probably something like D. It gives you a little bit more of dy dynamic range than the natural profile. But um, yeah, the, the Vlog for me is the one that I will use the most, especially if I'm shooting real estate. If I'm shooting weddings, um, I'll probably use the Cine like D just because it's a little bit easier to grade. Uh, the next setting in the menu, uh, if we go down, just leave all this as it is. Uh, the record quality I'll get back to later, but this one here, the uh, NTSC slash PAL, change that to NTSC. If you don't have that set to NTSC, um, then you only get 50p, but if you change it to NTSC, then you get the full um, 60p, uh, just because of a different, yeah, just because of the different settings. Uh, the next setting down from that is the record file format. You want this to be MOV. If you've got it as MP4, then that means that you won't get the best recording formats available for you. So MOV is the best one if you are doing any sort of editing in post. Um, time code, anamorphic, you don't need to worry about. Um, I said before to turn your AF assist light off. Focus peaking, I have set to on as standard. Um, in here you can set the sensitivity. I find that zero is okay. Um, with the S5, for some reason Panasonic has decided that uh, before you hit record you're actually getting a low res image on there. So the focus peaking tends not to work very well. 
Um, as soon as you hit record though, for whatever reason, the focus peaking works really well. So um, as you can see on, uh, I'll just expose them a bit better, on Pikachu Deadpool there, we don't have much peaking except for down the bottom, you can see a little bit of blue, but as soon as I hit record, he goes, he goes blue all over to let you know that he's in focus. So if you're ever unsure, hit record and you should be able to tell that things are in focus. Diving back into the menu. So um, the next thing I set is the sound record level. Uh, by default, Panasonic's internal preamps are quite hot. So I always set this to negative 12. Um, but I do set one of my custom buttons to change this. Uh, basically, I'll explain why a little bit later. But yeah, by default, I set it to negative 12. You can mute it if you want no sound at all, but you can go as high or low as you want. But as you can see, even my voice here, you get to negative four and it's already bordering on peaking. So yeah, the preamps inside these Panasonics are quite hot. Um, the limiter I always leave off. Limiters always increase noise. And if you're monitoring the audio, then you don't need to worry about it. Um, and I always leave it up on my screen there as well so I can monitor it in real time so I can see if it's peaking. Um, the wind noise cancellor I leave off as well. You can add this in post so you don't need to have it on in the camera. The, uh, the in-camera one basically just reduces the amount of flexibility that you have afterwards. Uh, with mic socket, I leave that as mic. There is an option for powered mics if your microphone needs power and there is a line in as well which is actually really good so if you're wanting to record directly from a board you can do that. Um, I leave it as mic because the mics that I use already have their own power and I don't need to worry about it but depending on what mic you use will depend on how you set that. Uh, sound output I leave as real time if you're monitoring it. Um, if you have it as real time then when you're monitoring the audio with headphones you won't be having a, that really weird delay. Um, it, if you set it to record sound, then there'll be a slight delay because you'll actually be picking up what is uh, being recorded onto the SD card. Um, yeah, uh, next menu, headphone volume, that doesn't matter. Silent mode, doesn't matter. Image stabilizer, I just leave the regular image stabilization on. If you wanted to make sure, if you were only on a tripod, then you can turn that off. Um, if you're on a tripod and you leave that on, then it can cause some really weird things if your subject's moving, uh, because it will try to move the frame around to keep them in the same spot. But uh, yeah, for the most part, just leave that on, especially if you're going a lot of handheld. Um, Boost IS, I set a hot button for that, uh, custom button, sorry. So I'll explain how I do that in a minute. Uh, live, live cropping, leave that off. So into the second menu here. Uh, the Q menu settings I'll leave the same. Function button settings I'll go into in a minute. The dial setting is important to me. I, uh, by default, the dial is actually set to headphone volume, which um, I don't monitor the audio all the time. When I do, it's handy to have that headphone volume, but uh, what I do use all the time is the ISO. So if you set it to ISO, then in, you can basically adjust your ISO using this button as opposed to having to press ISO and adjust it that way. Um, it just makes it a lot more easy to adjust it on the fly, especially if you're halfway through recording. Um, it's just one less button that you need to press so you're less likely to introduce shake into your shot. Here we go, this is the fun stuff. The histogram I leave on um, just because I like to be able to see how I'm exposed. The grid lines I leave on um, I mean, by this point, I should really know where the rule of thirds is, but it's still nice to have that reassurance as you're recording. Luminant spot meter, I'll explain that in a minute. That's actually a really handy feature to have in this. I leave it off by default, but I do turn it on sometimes, so I'll show you how I do that. Um, the vlog view assist. Now, if you're shooting in vlog, you definitely want to have this on. Um, I'll show you the difference. So this is shooting in vlog with the vlog monitor assist on so you can pretty clearly see even when you do this uh, whether you're in focus or not if you go and you turn this LUT off so this is basically an internal LUT if you go and you turn that off it's really flat it's actually a lot harder to tell whether you're going to be in focus or not um, because there's no contrast in the image it also means that the uh, the peaking doesn't work as well this doesn't get baked into the final file. It's just something that allows you to see what you're recording a little bit easier. 
So the next thing that I change is down here with the zebras. Um, you have three options. You have zebra one, zebra two, and zebra one and two. So the way I have those set is I've got zebra two set to 90 because when you're recording in V-Log, um, the image will clip just before 100. So I set it to 90 so that if it's at 90, I know that I don't have much more room to play with until the image clips at absolute white. Um, I set Zebra 1 at 65% because if I want to check skin tones, um, I don't want them, I mean, even 65% is a bit overexposed, but I don't want them to be any higher than that. So, um, yeah, that's why I've got those two set at that. Um, but I actually generally leave it off for the moment. Uh, waveform monitor I leave off as standard, but I do set one of my custom buttons to that, which I'll go through in a minute. The red record frame indicator is amazing. That wasn't something that was on the G85, it is on this one. Um, I leave it on because when you go to record, it puts a big red box around the image, so you can know just by having a glance whether you're recording or not. Um, it's an amazing feature, I don't know why every camera doesn't have that. Going down to the focus ring control, I set that as linear, you can have it set as linear or non-linear. If you're using a lens that's focused by wire, linear seems a little bit more natural to me. I don't know that there's a huge difference, but yeah, you can um, you can basically then set the how much throw you have as well. Um, but yeah, I just set that as linear just because it feels a bit more natural coming from mainly using manual lenses. Uh, moving on from there, uh, going across to the next menu. Um, so I've already set that beep, go to the front. Uh, the double card slot function. Now I've never had an SD card fail on me, but I do know people that have had SD cards fail on them. So especially if you're recording something like a wedding, you have the option to record to both SD cards at the same time, um, which is what I do. If I'm shooting a wedding, I don't want an SD card to fail and then lose something that's really important. So by recording to both at once, I have a constant backup. Um, you have the option to record to one and the other. You can record photo to one, video to the other. But for me, I set it to both. And the other really important one that I discovered um, afterwards was this setting here, this monitor backlight. By default, it's set to auto, and what that does is it, uh, similar to when you have your phone screen set to auto, it'll adjust the brightness depending on what area you're in, but it will do it while you're recording, which is really annoying. So you can um, basically alter how bright it is. I set it to zero. Um, if I move outside and it's really sunny, I move it up to plus three, but obviously you're gonna chew through the battery a little bit quicker. So set that one to zero. And that's basically all I set in the menus. So then um, uh, the next thing that I set up is my custom buttons. So all over the camera, every single button, even though it's assigned to something, you can actually assign it to something else. Um, you can do that in two ways. You can go into the menu, uh, and if I can find it quickly, which I probably can't. Here we go. Uh, under here, function button set. Uh, setting in record mode, so you've got three pages of these. Um, there's lots of different ones. There's a few that I set up, um, and I'll explain those. So the first one is the exposure compensation button, which is the one up the top here. Basically, when you're recording video, that doesn't do anything by default. So I've set that one to be Boost IS. Now, Boost IS will... Um, give you that extra level of stabilization. It crops in ever so slightly, but you can handhold it and it can almost be like you're on a tripod or maybe floating on a gimbal. So yeah, that's quite a handy one to have there. Uh, the other one that I change on the back here is this one down here, the back button. I change that to be my zebras. Um, now I have it set to my 90% zebras I, re I wish that Panasonic would allow you to press it over and over again and it cycles through your different zebras like it did on the GH5, but it doesn't do that. Maybe they can put that in a future firmware update, uh, but for the moment, that's what we've got. Um, then we've got this function button on the front. Now, the one on the front is beside the lens. Don't mistake it with the lens release button. If you hit the lens, re lens release button by mistake, 
for some reason it will close off the aperture even if you're mid recording which is really annoying um, but I've got that one set to my sound level adjustment recorder as you can see there so I'll go through these this is the exposure one as you can see in the top corner here it changes between the boost is and the normal one the one on the front I have as my sound level adjustment uh, the what was the next one this back button down here I've got set to zebras so zebras at 90% or zebras off so if you uh, begin to overexpose something you can see the zebras start to creep in as it gets to 90% I'll turn those off uh, then the next one is on this wheel there's actually a button on the top and left and right and on the bottom so on the top if I press that I actually get uh, what used to be called on the GH5 the X Tele converter um, with this you can go from full frame you can change to APS-C or you can go pixel to pixel so pixel to pixel basically uses if you're in 1080p it'll use 1080p of the actual sensor APS-C gives you a 1.5 crop and full frames using the entire frame of the of the sensor um, on the left I have that set to my waveforms which is really handy to have in vlog because as you can see if you overexpose you can see it like clipping the highlights there if you're underexposed you can see it uh, if you're underexposed you can see it clipping the shadows so yeah it's just a handy one to have um, don't have it on all the time I normally just set it on and off as needed uh, the right hand one is my peaking so you can see it's turning on and off around uh, little Pikachu Deadpool um, and then the bottom one is actually a really useful one especially when filming weddings it's the luminance spot meter so with the luminance spot meter um, it brings up this little thing in the middle of the screen and it tells you down the bottom how many stops over or under exposed you can move this around um, as you can see that's 1.9 stops over exposed now the reason why the luminance spot meter is so handy is because often you'll be in an environment where uh, maybe you're filming bridal prep and it's in quite a dark room or quite a bright room and because um, as a general rule it, uh, the exposure is center weighted it's looking at the entire frame to see what the exposure levels are so it might tell you that you're under or overexposed but the bride's skin might be perfect so ideally um, you can use this luminance spot meter and then bring it down until it's zero stops and then your bride's skin is going to be at around middle grey which is where you want your skin tones um, so it's a really handy one to have don't use it all the time but for those situations it's super helpful so yeah that's basically how I set up my custom buttons and my menus uh, the last thing that I do is I set up um, basically the three custom dials at the top and the S and Q dial so to do those I leave all the settings that I've just set the same uh, the only thing I change is the recording format so you can press this Q button to bring them up quickly so for custom one I use 4k 24 in 10 bit so I select that um, I go into the menu I go down to in here somewhere where is it go down to save to custom mode then I save that to C1 yes and now if I switch to C1 I have 4k 24 in 10-bit all my other settings are the same uh, basically do the same thing uh, for the next one I change it to 4k 60 in 10-bit bearing in mind that we do end up with a 1.5 crop because the S5 does 4k 60 but they do have a crop with it then I do the same thing save to custom mode save to custom mode 2 and then for the final one I change that to 1080p 60 in 10 bit so full HD 60 10 bit and then I do the same thing do it as C1 you have C1 C2 C3 but I only use those three custom ones because that's the three settings that I use the most uh, finally jump into SNQ mode um, from the first menu uh, second menu maybe yeah third menu um, the record quality I set to 24p because I always end up delivering my films in 24 frames a second 
Um, the slow and quick setting I set to 120 frames a second. You can go as high as 180 frames a second. I find that any, if you go over 120 frames a second, then the quality gets so bad that you just can't use it anymore. Um, but 120 frames a second seems to. But 120 frames a second seems to be that sweet spot where you can use it really, really well in professional professional quality uh, films. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I set my Panasonic S5 up for filmmaking. So yeah guys, that's it from me today. I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I will be getting back to some travel content shortly as borders are beginning to open up. So uh, gonna have to start planning some holidays soon. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.